watch the clock this is a teeny bit of the melting though this one is a very very short story see it's only two pages oh forget it I'm not even going to tell you where it is in my life if you can't figure out what melting <laughs> is then you can ask <laughs> Uh, her mind swirled and her tummy flip flop she knew he was home again. She could always sense when he was on the move. Unfortunate for her, it would always be a sick and nauseous feeling, but she knew nonetheless. She busied herself with a call she knew was coming. She cleaned the bathroom, rewashed dishes, and vacuumed the clean carpet. The ring. Hey. He sounded like a kid that had just almost got caught at something. Hi, she said dryly, walking from room to room. Just wanted you to know I'm home. I need to talk to you. So I'll call you later, okay? Sure. How are you? A woman though always wants to know how her man is doing. Even if he's not hers anymore. I'm great, he replied. They said their goodbyes. Let's see, take that out. Okay. Thank, thank you. <clears throat> okay, come on, Tosh. Um, her nipples ache for his touch, her breath caught in a sea of loneliness <clears throat> for his ear and heart. They had been apart for a, a whole week now. This was almost... This was almost, this was always the most difficult time for her. She longed for him, and yet she knew he could he would ha have to talk to all his friends, ex-lover, uh, associates, and take care of things after business every single time. If it had always been this, it, if, it, if it had always been this way, she didn't know, because before he would call regularly and mail her regularly so she knew nothing else here she is again waiting for him waiting for her to return for waiting for her turn to be with him her time was now all she lived for so once again she had to wait she wanted the, uh, she wanted to his other life would always come before her she sat at her computer and heard the words of an old Barbara Streisand song. You don't have to sneak in the door. Just come on into the room. I've been lying in our bed and it's dark all alone. And I've been waiting, I've been waiting for you. There's been no reason to move. It's been as still as a tomb. I needed you oh so badly tonight, but I guess you had better things to do. Sorry. <clears throat> Flashbacks. Hmm. <laughs> was that to be her destiny? She always listened to Barbara when she was very sad. She heard the key in the door. Her heart jumped to her hands as she rose slowly to greet him. She walked through the dark hall into the living room until she could feel the heat of his body on her. Back the room, and she engulfed his body with hers and felt his warm arms slither around her thick frame. She finally exhaled and wallowing in the bliss of him being with her. How could you think that of me? He pulled her up fully to his frame and held her so tightly she could barely breathe. How should I feel after being left alone for the past few weeks? He wiped her long tear away and kissed her so softly. She thought she had died in his arms. I don't need you to be in my face every single day. I don't, but I do need to communicate with me. I need you to communicate with me while you are gone. Every day, I need to know you are fine and have eaten. They lay in the inner. They lay in bed, intertwined with each other. She held him so tight he had to remove her hand from his side so he could have more room to breathe. I'm sorry. I get a, I get on the road and I get a little sidetracked. I will not do it again without telling you how beautiful you are or how blessed I am to have you in my life. That fat round mass was hardening under his 
death touch, under her death touch, as she moaned his name and grabbed a handful of blonde hair and massaged her under, under her touch. Okay. Have a fantastic day. Thank you. You too. Thank you. He's so nice. I love you more than you can know. He opened his sad eyes again to finish. I know things have been very difficult for you. I want to be with you from now on. And from now on, I will. No, I haven't made plan for, I haven't made a plan or anything that precise. I do know that I love you. I never wish for you to feel you are second to anyone or anything ever again. His voice was full of pain and sorrow. She knew when they met years ago, there would be, he really had no clue how to love a woman. She knew when they met years ago, he had a job not easy to do, but she had already taken on the challenge. They lay in bed till noon. The next day, the phone startled them away. <laughs> Hi, Mother Harris. She's right here, man. Smiling at the thought of him finally talking to her mom after all this time of knowing each other. It made her giddy to see him smile over at her while talking to her mom. They chattered for a bit and right before he handed her the phone, he, she, he asked Miss Harris one last thing. Would you mind if I married your daughter? I think that's probably the second second shortest story I've ever written. Okay. The story ends itself. And I named it that because she's slowly morphing into something else away from him, detaching from him. Excuse me. After all the, I won't say break up and get back together, but all the separations, you know, having known many men, many young men still in my life that are, you know, models and such, it's, it's a hard life for the other person to deal with, you know. You're gone for a month, I see you for two days, and you're gone for another three months, I see you for three days. You know, it's just a hard, hard life. And if that's you, your situation, it could be made easier just by consistency, you know? Consistency is such an important thing when you're separated, you know? It was a fun life while it lasted. And it's interesting to know that there's so many different types of love. You know, I love that person like I've never, ever loved anyone, ever, in my 46 years, 47. Hey, I consider myself Chinese, okay? It was wonderful. You're welcome, sweetie. Have a great day. You too. This is wonderful. It was a dream come true. You'll know a little teeny bit about it. <laughs> because, how much time do I have left? It starts, and fortunate for me, I wrote the book in the order of how, I'm putting the book, excuse me, in the order of how that life happened. Just us, the story of how, how we began, and that's pretty much a novella too. Just us and Night Cries are the two, anyway longest <laughs> bits of my life. So Just Us is how me and him and him met. And then I surrender to him, not to him. He's with him first. And then he met me. So it's not like I'm with him, I'm with him. <laughs> yeah, I know it doesn't make sense, but that's, that's the joy in it all. It's so wonderfully confusing to most people, except the people that are in the story that you're gonna read about. And then Beast. He's really into um, vampire stuff, so one day we were laying down reading and talking and drinking coffee and tea, and that story just popped out. 
um, that's my first story about <clears throat> him morphing into something else. Uh, but anyway, Red Letter Day was the day that uh, I didn't know we were getting married, but we were getting married. <clears throat> Night Cries is when I met Black Mark. Um, you see him in my friend's page. The property of, my, yeah, my heart still belongs to the other one. And then, finally, 180 degrees, where I say, I've had enough, goodbye. And then Ghost is where he is out of my life, but it was really the ghost in the house.